Well, good evening. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, we'll just go ahead and hop right into it. We're just going to do one song tonight since it's business meeting night. And uh, that's hymn number 353. Let's all stand together as we sing Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory! My Savior forever, He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew. streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. pray together. Father, we do thank you for Jesus and the victory that he has given unto us, Lord. What a wonderful thing that is. We can see out in the future, Lord, as he has prepared a place for each and every one of us that know him as Lord and Savior. So we just want to glorify him, Father. Glorify you, dear Lord, in all things. Thank you for the ones that are here tonight. We praise you and bless you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, good evening. It's good to see everyone. It really is. And uh, good to be back in the house of God. We're maybe few in number, but still in all, we're here to worship God. We're over the three point, or three people. And Jesus make four, but we're more than that. Thank you for that. Okay, folks. Uh, anybody got a, something they want to say? feel like I have to stand up here and do all the talk. 
All right, and that's all right. That's what we're here for. Okay, before we go into our, our uh, uh, all the other stuff we have, turn with me, if you will, in your Bible to Luke chapter 12. Now, this is a very, very important section of Scripture. And the title there is Whom to Fear. Who will we fear? Will we fear mankind? Will we fear those that maybe have a charge over us that can bring hurt to our lives, our families? We don't have to fear that because we, our main fear is in Jesus Christ and God the Father. So chapter 12 of Luke, starting with verse 1 there, and there the Bible says, in the meantime, now let me fill that in before going further right there. Now, Jesus had been uh, dealing with the Pharisees, and he was giving them all the woes, you know, one to you for this, that, and another. But one of them had invited him to supper. So he went to supper with the Pharisee, and the first thing the Pharisee asked him, he says, don't you wash your hands before you eat? And Jesus that just opened up a, a can of worms, so to speak, for him. He said, uh, you... Uh, you clean the outside, but you don't clean the inside because that's what the way they were, and that's what he could say to them. And then he moves on down all the different woes he gave them, and he comes to chapter 12, and there it starts. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable mul mul multitude of people insomuch that they trod or tri uh, trampled one upon another, he began to say in his, to his disciples, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now, you know leaven always stands for something that's, that's, that's not good. It's wicked, e evil. And so he says, and that's what the Pharisees had. Uh, you know what really he's talking about there is the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. They painted the outside. They were splendid stuff on the outside, but what did the inside look like? Well, they were, uh, they were very wicked. They wanted all the best for themselves. We see some of that today, don't we? But still, I know what he's pushing is, I want, to, I want to see an open book in you because I can see that you are wicked. There's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Let me ask you a question. You ever try to hide something? I mean, hide it from mama or maybe dad and, and uh, maybe say I didn't do that when you had. But that's hypocrisy because you're not telling the truth. Hypocrisy leads to lies. It leads to a lot of other things. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Uh, God sees all. He sees everything that comes into our lives or flows out of our lives. He sees it all. So there's no use to hide. There's no use to try to hide it under a, a bush or, or in a closet because he sees it. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye, ye have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Now, let me ask this. How many people, how many people talk in little circles or in hidden spots? How many people get along to themselves, but they maybe speak against someone or maybe a little group where they really speak against someone? God says, I see that. That's not hidden. It's not God's will that we would talk against anyone. We're all guilty of it now, but not, it's not what God would have us to do. So are we going to speak in the darkness, or are we going to come out into the light? God says, I see it all. Come out into the light. Let the world see that you truly are a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. Let the world see what you truly believe. Don't try to paint, paint it up uh, as something good when it's not something good. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. 
you know what? Us that are in Jesus Christ, these bodies are going to go anyway. I mean, they're not going to live through eternity. But we will have a glorified body. And praise the Lord for that. So why would we be afraid? Why would we be afraid of what man can do to us? What we better be looking at is what eternity is going to look like. How that in that day of judgment, at the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian, or the white throne for the judgment for the lost, what is God going to see? And here's the truth. All things will be wide open. If he, if he sees things that we've done that's been hidden like through hypocrisy, it's going to be brought out. It's going to be shown. Now, the judgment seat of Christ will be for rewards. It'll be the loss or the gain of rewards. And he knows all. We can't hide anything from God. He is a, a God that knows all things. And so that's what we need to look at. That's what we need to pr plan our lives after. Is, is after what God sees and how God is, how he wants us to live. That's what he wants. And that's what we need to practice and plan our lives after. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath, he hath killed hath power to cast into the hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Do you think that we live in a society that truly fears God? Very, very few, I'm afraid. Because people go about their own business, they do this, they do that. They serve themselves instead of Almighty God. They look out for the big eye instead of truly saying, Lord, here am I, use me for whatever. But God sees it all anyway, so why would we even think about or try to hide things from him? Now, I'm not saying just go out and throw everything wide open because there are things that we have confessed to him, and he said he'd be faithful and just forgive our sin, and also that he would rem not remember anymore. But that's a practice that we have to constantly do because uh, God he wants the very best for us, but it has to be his way, not our way. I've seen too many people, and I have to include myself in a lot, that just live, they live for what they want. They live what does them well. And I'm sure we've all been guilty of that at times. But God says, don't go that way. Don't walk that way. Look to me. Look to me because I was perfect when I walked to this earth. And I made disciples. I taught them. I showed them. Look to me, but don't look at those that walk the face of this earth that have their own, look for their own ways. He says, Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. What is that saying? That's telling you, it's telling me God sees all. We hide nothing from him. You know, I can remember back when I was a kid and two older brothers, you know, we would, uh, we had times we'd probably try to hide things from, from especially dad because he was going to bring out the stick if he found out. But that's what I'm getting at. It's hypocrisy. It's, it's lying. It's living a lie. It's trying to serve oneself instead of truly even serving mom and dad because they were looking out for the best. And so we have to see God in that way. Fear God, folks. Don't fear man or what he can do to you. Because that person that walks in this life is out for his own good. He's going to face God. He's going to face him in that day of judgment, one of the judgments, and he's going to give an account. And that's what we need. That's why we need to fear God now. We're going to move on. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Tell you what, God knows all. He, he loses nothing. He looks at all. He sees it all. And he goes on there. He says, uh, Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. God, and that's something we really need to consider. He looks at us as special because he put 
he put put uh, all this in our bodies, our minds, and all that we can uh, understand what God is saying, and we can communicate with each other. But that can be a flaw to us because we get in our minds how we want to live and what we want to live like when God says, don't go that route. Come to me. Let me ta- train you and teach you. Remember all the times he's teaching his disciples? He had problems with them uh, because they didn't understand, for one thing. But there again, for us, that's where the Bible says, study, show yourself approved unto God. We need to be in the book. We need to be talking to God. We need to be receiving from God, just exactly how he wants us to be. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Now what's that telling us? Think about this. Witness to people, confessing him. Let me tell you about my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me show you a better way of life that comes only through the Son of God, the one who came to this earth and died for each and every one. Let people know what you stand for, what you live for, because we will give account, and that's the way it is. When we meet some folks out on the street, we'll get uh, kind of brushed off. had one the other day uh, uh, in a store, and I just happened to mention to him, and he was from the north. I mentioned to him, and asked him, said, you go to church anywhere? He said, don't ask me that question in here. And he just, he brushed me off. Well, that's all right. That's all right, because what seed I could sow to him, God can come back and use that. And he can bring that person to really, really come to understand or seek out someone, even if they have to say, now what that man mean about that? Well, we all know as Christians we're supposed to and should be in church. But he goes on to say, But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of heaven. Folks, what kind of a place are we going to be positioned, if you want to call it that, in heaven? Are we going to be those that are going to have shame? And I guess, guess to some degree we probably all will have some shame. But God says, come and follow me. Let me teach you and show you. Let me lay out before you exactly what God has created in this life and in human beings. But who will follow? Who will walk with him? Who will surrender all to him? Who will confess their sins to him and receive that forgiveness? And whoso shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be given, forgiven. Now, that is the sin unto death. Now, what could that mean? And I've been studying on this. Well, now, when Jesus came, when he came as a, as a child and grew up, uh, he was denied and he was, uh, he was treated terribly. But when the Holy Ghost came along, Hey, that was the bottom line. There was nothing else that could be done because to deny the Holy Ghost is to deny that God even exists, about the Holy Ghost exists, the one who works within. But that is the sin unto death. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. That's dangerous. And I think we know that. Look at our own lives. Let's see if we can get this in perspective. Look at our own lives. The way we live, the way we stand up for Jesus, the way we look at how he has, has worked in our lives, in this world, lest we do not, our lives say that we do not blaspheme the Holy Ghost because he is one that lives in here. Can you deny what God has put here through Jesus Christ? I don't think so. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take you no thought how or what thing you shall answer or what you shall say. Now check this out. 
talking about the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Now, I've been reading on that, and that's why uh, preachers, teachers, before they go and preach and teach to anyone, they need to spend time alone with God. They need to know the Word of God. They need to receive from Him the very words that come out to be shared with others because that's the work of God through the Holy Ghost and to His people. Now, let me go through that section there of the parable of the rich fool, and I think we can pick up more on that. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, notice what Jesus said, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? There are more important things. There are people dying and going to hell that are lost, that need to hear about Jesus. And like in our day, too, now. People so, so concerned about worldly things, about lustful things, if you want to put it that way. But he says, let's get back down to business. Let's see what is most important here. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. You know what? We've all been blessed. Anyone here that's not been blessed? I know we all have. We've been blessed. Why worry about material things? We, we know where it comes from. We know that God takes care of us. We know that God has love for us. We know that God provides, as he says in his scripture. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a rich man, certain rich man, brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? He really got a problem, hadn't he? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns, build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Now here, verse 19, he lied to himself. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Folks, that's, uh, that's hypocrisy. In a man, because he don't know what he's talking about, and he's lying to himself. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall thou uh, those things be which thou hast provided? So he, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I went to a promise keeper's meeting once, and uh, there was a there was a, actually a black man that was doing the service. And he was preaching on this right here. And he got to that verse uh, 19. And he says, uh, that God, or 20, God said to him, Hey, fool. That's how he put it. You, know, you would expect that from a black person. But I thought that was so funny. Everybody got a kick out of it. But the truth is, God saying you are a fool if you only can grasp the things that he has given us because it's not we that can provide for ourselves, but it's only God. But that is what God wants of us. Now, will we take that? Will we say, Lord, you've been so good to me, so gracious, so kind. You've provided for me. I just want to thank you, and I want to serve you with my life, my heart, and I want to be Helpful to other people. See, that man with that barn and all those fruits and all that he put in that barn, the new barn, uh, why wasn't he giving that to the poor, the hungry? We have a lot of people that's hungry in our day and time. Why not give and help them? We can do it through different uh, uh, things, like uh, even like the Samaritan's Purse, where they go out and, and give to these uh, uh, where they've had catastrophe and and people starving, hungry, uh, no home anymore. That's what we need to look at, is how that we can, can help those that are truly in need. I think God will hold us accountable for that. Uh, I think that God expects us, his children, that we would give to help his cause. And you can find that over in uh, uh, verse 31. 
where he says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven. And all these things shall be added to you. Why worry about things? Why worry about, uh, am I going to have enough to make it through this winter? God already knows. You don't have to wonder. He knows already. He knows what you need is. He knows that his coffers are never empty, that he's always got what it takes to take care of his own children. We need to look at that. We need to, to trust in him and receive from him. We thank him for that and what he's going to do. You know, I've been, I've been thinking a lot, and you'll see as we get into our, our business meeting, how God's blessed this church this year in the last year and a half. Folks, our offerings have been good. God's been gracious, kind. He is one that will provide. But are we going to trust him or are we going to trust our, our own selves or maybe those that can give and maybe some that can't? All we have to do is trust Almighty God and let him do the providing. Let him give what is needed. We don't want to be greedy. We don't want to be stacking up like the man with the barn. We don't have to be a barn right here to put all our goodies in. But we want to serve God and love others and serve him in a way that brings glory and honor to him. And I think that's what he will, he will bless us with. I think that is what he expects of us. And I think that's exactly what he wants to do. Amen? Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we...